wanted to look at Quinburn Orange this week. It is pigment PO48. Um, the light fastness ratings are excellent for Daniel Smith, M. Graham, and Roman Schmall. Core rates it as a 2 on their scale, and Da Vinci rates it as very good. So those two brands um, claim to be a step down on the light fastness, just to let you know. This is a transparent pigment, and it is staining. As many of you probably already know, it's also a big part of the Quinn Gold formula, which is a combination of Quinn Burnt Orange and Nickel Azo Yellow or PY150. Many brands call Nickel, nickel Azo Yellow transparent yellow. So let's start with Da Vinci. I want to wet the bottom first this time. I haven't had this sketchbook very long, so I'm not quite used to the paper yet. Okay, so Da Vinci. And I just squeezed this out of a tube, so the paints are going to be fresh. This is a thirsty paper. It's um, Kilimanjaro from Cheap Joe's, if anyone's interested. Okay. That should be even. Daniel Smith is next. And QBO just means that the brand is naming it Quinn Burnt Orange. There's a little variation on the name. But the pigment is the same across all of the brands. This one's much oranger. I'm not a big fan of the Da Vinci Quinn Burnt Orange because it's a bit browner. I like them to be nice and bright in orange. The Daniel Smith one is also part of their secondary trio. It has um, undersea green, dioxazine purple, and quinburn orange in it. It's like $24, I want to say, on Amazon here in the U.S. So if you want to get the pigment, it might be a cheaper way to go. I got mine in the set. I don't know if I would have tried this pigment otherwise. And core. Still can't believe how fast Core's um, wet paint dries. Oh, I didn't wet the bottom. It'll work. I actually really like the Quinn Burnt Orange from, um, oh, I'm sorry, Quinn Gold Deep. Yeah, Core calls their Quinn Burnt Orange Quinn Gold Deep, but it's still the PO48. I kind of use this interchangeably with the Daniel Smith. I find the colors to be very similar. Although I wasn't fast enough down here, and it is looking a lot darker. There we go. I just want you to be able to see the uh, gradation. Yeah, you can see how similar these two are. Okay, now M. Graham calls theirs Quinn Rust. Oh, I am so sorry. 
one I have in a very messy Imgram palette. But with Imgram, it doesn't really matter because their colors just re-wet so readily. And I'm blocking that. Okay, let me try not to hit that again. And I forgot the water again. I'm just having problems tonight. I don't know what's going on here. Okay. And then Roman Schmal, which is obviously in a pan. So I have my Roman Schmal palette. And theirs is called Quinn Burnt Sienna. I didn't lock that in place properly. I kind of think Quinn Burnt Sienna is a better name, only because this, I guess for a burnt orange, it just, this doesn't feel like what a burnt orange would look like to me. And I think the only um, Quinn Burnt Orange made in a professional line that I'm missing here is Rembrandt's. Okay, those look pretty dry to me. The Da Vinci does still look um, quite brown to me. The Daniel Smith and Core are very similar. I would say that Core is a bit brighter and I know that i brought the mass tone down a little bit more with Core, but I didn't with the other brands and it just seems more vibrant to me. Um, M, or, yeah, M. Graham's Quinn Rust, I've never really liked the M. Graham one. There are several M. Graham paints that have a weird texturing on the paper and I'll bring it up in a second so you can see it's not granulation it's just a weird kind of texture and I don't like it so um, I think if it wasn't for that I would probably use M Graham a whole lot more because being in Southern California it's really dry here and I don't have to worry about it liquefying but um, yeah, that's my only hesitation with M. Graham. And you can see that uh, it leans a little bit more towards like a brown color than these do. Yeah. And then the Roman Schmal, um, I was trying to smooth it out and I miss, messed this up. So none of these uh, paints bloom. But the Roman Schmal is so, it's like glowing. It almost looks like it has Nicola Azo yellow in it, but it doesn't. Um, I think if you didn't want to get a Quinn Gold or you didn't want to get a um, Quinn Burnt Sienna and Nicola Azo yellow from Roman Schmal, I would just do the Quinn Burnt Sienna. It's just, I know that Quinn Gold is much brighter, but there really is like a brightness to this that I don't even see in cores. I can't really explain it. Although I'd hate to say not to get Nicolazo Yellow because it's like my favorite yellow, but um, Roman Schmal definitely performed very well in this comparison. So now let's look at them closer. So there's Da Vinci. And then Daniel Smith. And then the 
next one is the Quinn Gold Deep by Core. And then M. Graham's Quinn Rust. And there, I don't know if you can see that kind of speckle pattern. It That just shouldn't be there. And then we have Roman Schmal. Now this isn't wet. Um, I found that this pan had a bit of binder on the top of it. And even in the swatch for my palette, it's a little bit shiny. I've noticed that on a few of my Roman Schmal paints. And I think it's just what they put on top to keep it protected. I don't know if it's part of the wax paper, but I have noticed a few paints that had binder, a lot of binder, and they kind of shouldn't have. So these are the Quinburnt Orange. If I had to pick, I would say probably Core first, and then maybe Roman Schmal second, and then Daniel Smith. I used to see these two as interchangeable, but I hadn't yet compared them to the Roman Schmal. But it just depends on what you like. I mean, other than Da Vinci, which is much browner, I would still say whatever is the cheapest in your area, and Rembrandt does make this pigment. I just don't have it, and so that might be a cheaper option depending on where you live too. So these are the PO48 pigments, and thank you for watching. I will see you later.